Today I'm sharing 10 things I wish I knew before I started homeschooling. Hi everyone, Jennifer here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. I have a homeschooling video for you today. For those of you who don't know, I'm a homeschooling mom of four children. We are nearing the end of our fourth year in homeschooling and it's something that I'm really passionate about. Took me by surprise. I never planned to homeschool, but here I am and I have a lot to say on the subject. Today's video is sponsored by Babbel, which is the number one language learning app in the world and they have over 10 million subscriptions worldwide. So we're going to get to Babbel later on in the video, but for now, let's jump into my first point. All right, the first thing that I need to share with you is consistency is key. This is one of the most important things that we're going to talk about in this video. Consistency is key. I recently sat down with a group of homeschooling parents and we were having a discussion and um, the group leader was asking us, what was the one thing you wish you knew? That was the number one thing that was coming up among all of us was that consistency is key. And something I'm really happy with is that we have been so consistent with math, okay? Because here's the thing about homeschooling is that you might be romanced by a lot of different curriculums and find yourself flitting from one to another to find that perfect unicorn curriculum that doesn't exist, quite frankly. So the, the thing is, is that consistency is key. And there were so many veteran homeschool parents that said, just stick with something. <laughs> and stick with it and be consistent. It's those day-to-day -day, uh, victories that really add up and don't keep switching, especially with the important things. And I would really have to add to that. So we've been very consistent with math. We've been using the same curriculum. We're actually going to switch it next year as the children get older. But up until this point, we've been so consistent with it. We do it every day. It's just something that we've been building on and my children are really good at math. And I think it's just a misconception. So many people, especially homeschool parents or just adults in general say, oh, I was so bad at math. But are we really that bad at math? So I'm basically learning right along with my children again, because I was one of those people who said, I'm so bad at math, I don't get it, you know? But the thing is that, um, perhaps we weren't learning the right way for us when we were taught it in school. So consistency is key. Be very consistent with your core subjects. That's my number one tip. Tip number two is to not be afraid of different ways of learning. A lot of people will say, don't try to recreate the classroom at home. Don't be afraid. <laughs> you don't have to sit down with a big textbook in order to learn. There are so many different ways to learn, especially now with online options, which I'll get to later on in this video. So don't be afraid to try a different style of learning. Research different uh, methods out there and see what would work best for your children. I'm gonna break away here and talk about Babbel, who is the sponsor for today's video, and I'm so happy to be sponsoring with them. I think this is one of the coolest sponsorships we've had here. So they are the number one language learning app in the world. They have over 10 million subscribers worldwide to their app, and I've been using it myself. You know that I speak French. My French is not good. So honestly, I could use Babbel to brush up my French, but I am learning Spanish. This has been a lifelong desire for me. So I'm using Babbel to learn Spanish. You can choose the increments of time each day that you wanna work on the language. University researchers have shown that 15 hours of Babbel equals one college semester of Spanish. Isn't that wild? Babbel is different than other learning apps because it prepares you for situations you will actually encounter in real life. I love the fresh format because it helps you test your comprehension. So here's a little example of the style of teaching that Babbel uses. She is Anna and he is Miguel. So I'm going to choose L. Ella es Ana y él es Miguel. Ella es Ana y él es Miguel. This one says, are you informal, Carla? So I'm going to choose two instead of usted. Get up to 50% off a Babbel subscription when you click on my link below. Thank you so much to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. So going back to that topic, consider an app. I mean, I love efficiency and that's one of my favorite things about homeschooling is that it's efficient yet joyful learning. And so when you think about Babbel, for example, 
15 hours is the equivalent of one college semester. I mean, that's amazing. If you can learn something more efficiently, why not? All right, tip number three is that love of learning is the goal. That is the goal. It's not to score well on every test that you take or to memorize these facts or to be able to spout off things to people who question your homeschooling choice. No, the goal is to love to learn. That should be the goal for any child, whether they go to public, private, or, or they're homeschooled. The love of learning. Because if you instill a love of learning, that curiosity in your child, they will be lifelong learners. And as I have always said as adults, something that is so important for us, it was in my uh, How to Be More Beautiful video, right? We need to be lifelong learners. We need to be curious. We don't want to, uh, the second we graduate, just veg out on the sofa and just watch Netflix for the rest of our lives. We want to do things, learn instruments, learn new skills, research things. So the love of learning is key. If homeschool gets to the point where everyone's frustrated and crying and it's just so tedious, it's time to take a step back. It's, it's time to instill the love of learning. What can you do to make learning exciting for your family? The fourth thing I wish I knew before we started homeschooling was never say never. <laughs> this is, should be something that I should know anyway from life. Never say never. All right, so what am I talking about? Well, sometimes you'll enter into homeschooling and, and be kind of snobby about it and think, I'm never gonna do that. I am never gonna do this. Well, never say never. I used to sort of look down at online curriculums because I just didn't think that they were as superior as in-person teaching. But what I learned from this year was that a little mix of both is actually really good. And online curriculums can teach different skills to your children that yes, we didn't have when we were growing up, but that's because the technology wasn't there. And it's important for them to have these computer skills. So maybe you take one class online, a virtual class. My children in the past have taken uh, Minecraft science where they <laughs> learn through Minecraft on the computer with a live teacher. I think that's pretty cool. Um, this year we started brushing up on some grammatical skills and reading comprehension skills online. And that's something that I might have turned my nose up at a few years prior. So it's important to never say never and just to always be reevaluating what you're doing. A lot of homeschool parents feel completely pulled in different directions if you have multiple children that you're homeschooling. So uh, you might feel stressed if they all need you at once. Well, a good option is to put one of them in an online class while you work with the other and then switch. If you feel burnout from teaching everything, they can do science online or they could do history or language arts or something, but it's good to mix it up. So never say never. Tip number five of what I wish I knew before I started homeschooling is to not be afraid to veer off the curriculum don't be afraid. The curriculum should just be a guide for you. You don't have to do everything that it tells you to do like a robot. You don't have to do it a certain way. So I'm going to give you an example. I was teaching my third grader about commas the other day and with the curriculum we were using, sometimes with those curriculums, you know, they have to put the commas where they go, but are they really learning about where they go, right? So I veered off the path of the curriculum and we went to the board and we talked about the different areas where you're, you're going to need commas. So lists, direct address, places, etc. And then I gave her sample sentences that she could write on the board and insert the commas herself. And I was able to see when we did that where she did not understand the concept and we were able to work on that. So yes, we went off the curriculum. Sometimes if you're using a worksheet style curriculum, uh, it's easy for them to figure out how the worksheet works and just kind of put the answers in, but it's much more effective. This is a very Charlotte Mason way of teaching to have them, uh, to dictate to them and have them write out the sentence to figure it out themselves. Those things are really important. All right, the next thing I wish I knew was to capitalize on it when they show interest in something. So you might have a set list of things you'd like to get through during the day and don't focus so much on crossing off that to-do list because sometimes they might show interest in something and again, you might have to veer off the path in order to go there and that means that you take a few things off the list for that day. 
That's okay. Remember, we want them to love learning. So my preschooler made a uh, Paul Revere hat for his art project the other day, and he was showing interest in Paul Revere. And my other daughters have learned about him too, but we sat down and talked about Paul Revere. So we read a little bit about Paul Revere. I showed them a little YouTube video about Paul Revere for kids, and we read the Longfellow poem about Paul Revere. So we did a little deep dive into Paul Revere. Well, guess what? They're going to remember who Paul Revere is <laughs> and the little facts around it because that was sealed in their memory and we did a little deep dive study on it. So don't be afraid to stop everything if they show a lot of interest in something and to just really go there because that's what's exciting about school. You don't just want to get the facts in your head, right? It's like if you're eating a meal, having a, a meal and you, you don't just want to just consume, just stuff your face, right? That's not the point of eating the meal. You want to enjoy it, the nuances of it, the conversation, the nutrition, the digestion, it, it all matters. So there you go. Number seven, what I wish I knew before I started with homeschooling. Get prepared with your meal plan because now you are at home. And yes, now you have to provide lunch for everybody. Maybe previously, if your children went to public or private school, that was taken care of for you and you only had to worry about yourself. But you do now need to feed everybody. So whether that involves your children taking responsibility and them uh, making lunch one day a week, or whether you have to come up with an idea where you do freezer meals or you prepare things on a Sunday, whatever your plan is, Get prepared with that so that that's not stressful for you and you still have a nice nutritious meal. All right, the eighth thing I wish I knew before I started homeschooling was to encourage your children to be as independent as possible. We have a tendency to want to do everything for our children and to be there for them but it's good to encourage independence. Again, this is moving them toward the goal of the love of learning because we want them to be independent lovers of learning, <laughs> basically. So as independent as they can be, if they need to look something up rather than just saying, mom, what does this mean? Give them a dictionary, you know, or they can go get the dictionary, but just to encourage that independence where they can do work by themselves. You don't need to be hovering over them the whole time. And my friend Karen has a YouTube channel called Our House, and I really recommend Karen's channel. She does a curriculum called Robinson Curriculum where the children are largely independent. And so if you have any questions, I'm sure she would love to um, answer them. So I'll leave Karen's YouTube channel, Our House, in the show notes down below. Okay, for the last two points, I am turning to you because I went on the YouTube community tab recently and I asked you what you wish you knew before you started homeschooling and there are so many amazing comments. I will try to link that community post down below so you should go read what everybody wrote. But these were the top two comments. Um, so this is number nine. Beep Brundage wrote, I wish I had known that we could spend more time exploring and not doing so much book work in the younger grades, making for more enjoyable days. And so many people resonated with that. And I can definitely attest when you have a preschooler or a kindergartner, it's again about the love of learning, about the joy, about the exploration, do arts and crafts, get up, walk around, do nature studies and things like that. It does not have to be hours of book work when they are that young. We want them to not be burnt out and hating school when they are in kindergarten, right? So I completely agree with that and so many of you did as well. And then tip number 10, Julie wrote, there is a lot of keep students busy work in most curriculum. Use wisdom to spend time on the very most important things. Life skills, social skills within the family, character and independent learning skills are just as important as learning from books. And I completely agree with that too, Julie. And Charlotte Mason calls that twaddle when you have too much busy work. Don't do all the busy work. You know, we, um, in our math curriculum, for example, it is extremely comprehensive, which is great. But if they understand a concept, you don't need to beat a dead horse. You know what I mean? So I will definitely cross off things if my children show that they understand a concept. You don't have to do everything that the curriculum says. So um, I completely agree with that. You don't need the busy work. Allow them free time to read, to explore, to come up with what they are interested in, what they want to do. That's really important. 
I wanted to close with sharing two books that were written by you, uh, Daily Connoisseurs here, that would be great for homeschool families. The first one comes from Carrie Van Hooser, who wrote, "'Tis the season for poetry through the year with poems and activities for children and their families." Uh, Carrie is a member of the Sheik Society, and I wanted to share with you this lovely book on poetry that she has written. The other one is Chewy Marmot by S. E. Sprocker. So she's also in the Sheik Society. And I wanted to share these books with you because we are enjoying them ourselves. And it's always nice to know about new books for children to read. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it gave you a lot to think about if you are considering homeschooling yourself or if you're in the middle of homeschooling as well. I would love to hear your tips. If you have anything to add to this conversation, please leave them down below. Thank you so much to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to click on my link below to receive up to 50% off your Babbel subscription. Mantega la calma y mantega la clase. There you go. <laughs> Bye everyone, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.